Hi there, welcome to Nepi Invest. Time is 4.05 p.m. on the 7th of June. I've decided to do another daily update. I have another video prepared to release, but I'll wait until tomorrow to release that video because I will be in between two night shifts and I prefer not to do any videos when I am in, in between night shifts. Anyway, before we have a look at the announcements released on the 7th of June, let's go back to yesterday because there was an announcement released at 7.08 p.m., the last announcement of the day. In fact, there wasn't any announcements apart from this one after 5 p.m. And that was a company called Erison Group, to code AE1, Appointment of Voluntary Administrators. So it seems like the run, two-year run that this company has been on the ASX is coming to an end. In fact, I did do a video on this company and here is the facts of Erison Engineering Services Company, founded in 1988, listed on the ASX July 2021. Now, the whole reason seems like this company has gone into, we'll have a look, if we've got it open up here, here we go. The whole reason Erison Group has gone into administration is because of a dispute with Roy Hill. Now, they released an announcement on the 12th of May in regards to this announcement as a fairly big uh, uh, dispute in terms of financials, um, totaling 47.5 million. So if you don't know who Roy who is, it's owned by Hancock Prospecting or something like that, which is now run by, it's not, Gina Reinhardt doesn't run that company. It's run by someone else, but she's like the major shareholder or something like that. I can't mention this dispute. I don't know who's in the wrong, who's in the right. Who knows? Eventually it will be figured out. But this whole dispute has meant that Erisund is no longer able to run as an ongoing concern or whatever you want to call it. And they have appointed voluntary administrators. And in fact, if you look at that announcement, uh, they seem like they want to sell the company. Uh, well, the administrators do, called Amentha. Uh, it says here, the administrators are currently making an urgent assessment of the group's financial position and viability with a view to undertaking a restructure or sale recapitalization. And they also mentioned somewhere that they do expect some good interest, pretty good interest in regards to uh, this company. So that, this might be the end for Erison as a listed entity on the ASX. That's unfortunate for current shareholders. However, in saying that, there's really been no reason to hold this company financially. And even if you look at the chart, share price has been drifting down ever since it listed on the ASX back in the middle of 2021. So that was the only really announcement yesterday after I did that particular video. On to today, 80 price sensitive announcements so far. And there were a couple of semi-interesting, oh, there's one just popped in at 3.19 p.m., which I am interested in. Uh, so let's go all the way back to the start of the day. Um, and probably the first announcement, uh, there was sort of Volpara Health Technologies. I am following not closely that company, but they signed a breast screen Victoria for five years. However, the share price only up 1.33%. So the market didn't quite like that as much as I thought maybe it would have. You I always get this mixed up. GQG, I always want to say QGQ, but GQG Partners released their funds under management. Remember yesterday, uh, Magellan Financial Group released theirs. Significant debt, not significant, but still funds under management, still going down for that company. And QGQG funds under management fell slightly from 98.6 billion to 98.5 billion. And that's in US dollars. Let's see if the reaction for the, oh, the market liked it, up 3.25%. Sequoia so Financial Group, company I do own, uh, they are divesting Mori, Morrison Securities and they have received a bit of a sum for that, up 4.5%. Is it understandable? Otherwise, not a lot of excitement, not a lot of really, really interesting announcement in terms of trading updates, but I'll get to those. However, a company called Pacific Edge, which I did have a look at um, or maybe even mention a few weeks ago, Medicare coverage of X bladder expected to cease. So straight away, that title sounds really negative. So I open it up, had a look at it, and it's definitely negative. A lot of negative commentary here. Um, I won't say they're saying negative stuff about uh, someone called Novitus, the Medicare administration contractor, because they say here uh, that their cancer diagnostics uh, X bladder test 
in the US market won't uh, have any Medicare coverage from the 17th of July, 2023. The CEO of Pacific Edge says the company is surprised and disappointed with the finalized LCD. He says the local coverage determination appears to be materially misunderstand the important role that biomarkers can play. And they also mention here that uh, this Novartis was only being negative. They said here, we believe that Novartis analysis has sought to predominantly emphasize negative comments in CX Bladder publications. And they then went on to say that the, what do you call them, the oncologists or urologists uh, have demonstrated by the record number using the test that they're in favor of this particular thingy, whatever you want to call it, diagnostic thing, X bladder test. So you would expect because of this, and they also mentioned here, there's going to this is going to materially um, affect the company. And when we say materially, we mean materially affect the company. And you would expect because of that, the share price to absolutely collapsed. And here it is. Share price down 73.7 per cent. Now, the reason I looked at this company not long ago was because on the 25th of May, they delivered an announcement cause called or named, what do you want to call it? I, I don't know why it takes so long to open up. I've, I've got um, fiber to the premises, um, but sometimes it takes so long to open these up, then I can download a five gigabyte file in like five seconds, maybe not that long. Anyway, so the whole reason I, this company piqued my interest was this particular announcement. Now Pacific Edge delivers on growth strategy, financial year 23, uh, revenue increased 71% to 19.6 million. Now they're not profitable. Uh, net loss after tax increases to 27 million, which seemed a lot. I remember uh, reading that went, oh, that's still a massive loss. And that actually loss increased from the previous year. Uh, previously it was 19.8 million. So even though uh, operating revenue had increased, I put this company into my watch list. I just want to see how this company performs over the next few years because it hasn't been listed on the ASX for too long. Peb, I think it was Peb. Peb, Pacific Edge, hasn't been listed for too long. And to be honest with you, the financial performance, well, share price performance has been quite disappointing. In fact, share price high for this company was the day they listed back in September of last year or September 2021 and the share price has decreased from about dollar and 60 cents all the way down to 10 cents so that's a massive decrease in share price and valuation of this company and the valuation of this company before this announcement was 365 million so you can just imagine in fact let's have a look at the market of the company now top losers which will be probably the top top loser so market cap of this company might be 140 million, something like that. 81 million. This, yeah, that's a yeah, 81 million. So yeah, the market has significantly. I, I even overestimated the market up then. The market has significantly punished this company because of this particular announcement. Now, they are appealing. More than likely, they will appeal. Not sure if they'll be successful. If they are successful, market cap of 81 million. There are the companies burning through a lot of cash. And I don't know much else about this company, so uh, this could be. Bit of a dagger to Pacific Edge, but that waits to be seen. So, probably that's all I've got for Pacific Edge, the worst performing company today, down 74%. If I see a pretty good company down 74%, although would you ever say a good company would ever see the share price down 74%? I doubt, think so. Don't think so. So, that's Pacific Edge. Uh, unfortunately, for shareholders, share price down a lot. Uh, nothing much else. Navonics, uh, Nevec, or Navonics and LGS, LGES enter in JDA and 30 million investment agreement. More than likely, market probably would react nicely to that, up 19%. That's a sort of announcement I don't really put much weight into. Um, I just want to see, and you can see share price of Novonics, even though it's up almost 20% today, is still in a downtrend, pretty good volume. But it's still a downtrend. It's just moving to that red area. And that's just simply just resistance, that red area. So whenever we have seen share price sort of move into that area over you know, the past few months, it's gone further lower. Uh, so this is not a shift in sentiment for this company, not a shift in the trend. Uh, but the share price, nice movement today. But uh, more than likely, you will see some selling coming in, taking advantage of the rise in share price today. So uh, not the sort of announcement I will jump at at all. 
uh, Abacus uh, Group, Market Update. I had a quick look at that, but not the sort of company I'm interested in. They're in real estate. Might be a REIT up 1.1% since Viva Energy incident at Geelong Refinery. Whenever I see incident, more than likely your share price will decrease down 2.8, but nothing significant. Holly Novo, this is an interesting one. First ever $7 million sales month. Now, the valuation of this company is really high. Well, share price has been quite volatile over the past, say, two years. Really nice uptrend developing from the middle of last year all the way through to the start of this year. Share price went from about 80 cents all the way up to $2.60. And then sentiment just shifted like that. And share price went from about $2.70 down to about $1.31. So a 50 cent drop in share price. Share price has bounced over the past month or so. And on the back of this announcement as well, we have seen a nice little bounce uh, share price up. 15.8%. And what is it? So first ever $7 million sales month. Uh, you can see the monthly sales here really increasing nicely. Although this goes from April 2019 to May 2023. So this is not the last six months. This is, I don't know what or how they've chosen these um, months. So April 2019, December 2019, July 2021, January 2022, September 2022, May 2023, sales have increased. Monthly sales have increased from 1.3 to 7.2. I'm not sure this is a sort of announcement I'd get excited about either, but the market, again, excited. And um, I, I personally, I wouldn't jump at that sort of announcement because probably know they've shown they have increased their sales, but this is just, you know, sort of like a marketing announcement, in my opinion. Uh, what else? Have we got today? Um, there was at least one uh, button, B U T N, I'm assuming that's how you pronounce it, trading update. Had a quick look at that. It's a fairly small company, mark cap $20 million, up 4.8%. Uh, I think they, they're a lender or something like that. Uh, Vection, I like this company, Vection Technologies, mark cap about $50 million. Uh, they acquired a lead fashion retail XR Revolution. So this, Company is in virtual reality, that sort of thing, hence VR. Um, and I think that company has a lot, could grow significantly, uh, but it has been hurt. Let's have a look at the uh, one chart. But because it's loss making, burning through cash, uh, even though it's in the right space, chart is in a downtrend, has been going down. Look at that excitement in this company back in November 2021. Share price went from about seven cents to 29 cents in a fairly short period of time. But that excitement's weighed away. But if we start to see a shift in the overall sentiment of the market, when companies like this, particularly if we start to see interest rates start going down, and we did see some negative news about the economy today, uh, it's crashing quicker than what they were thinking. Um, if we do see that shift in sentiment, uh, interest rates going down, and these companies become favoured again, this is one of the companies I would expect to see some, a lot of interest in, particularly if they can continue to grow their revenue. They are growing revenue at a really quick rate. So Vection Technologies, put that onto your watch list. Uh, otherwise, we'll have a look at the best performers later as well. Um, and then I do know there's one company I just want to have a look at, Corvest, Profit Guidance. This was interesting. Um, and this was positive. because I did have a quick look at this because I wanted to see Oops, I don't want to zoom in. Let's zoom out. Uh, actual second half trading has exceeded expectations. Expected that profit now to be in the order of $15 million for the full financial year. And that's a good sign because Corvus was actually, we had seen the share price struggling, not struggling, but really going sideways. And I wouldn't jump in in regards to this either. So the only way I would jump into this is if, the share price, which is at $7.65, was at at least a one-year high. But you can see the share price has been significantly higher over the past 18 months. No, maybe not significantly higher, but it's been higher than this over the past 18 months. So right now, the share price of Corvus is just going sideways, consolidating after a really good uptrend in the share price over the past, we'll say, five years. Share price has gone from $2 all the way up to $8, a nice fallbagger for shareholders during this period. Now, this company has been, I've done a few videos on this company. This company has been around for a long, long time. Let's have a look at the monthly chart. So you can see a lot of volatility in the share price of this company. 
In fact, the share price high was recently, but before that, uh, the share price high before that was 2013. And just a lot of volatility. Uh, this company went through a lot of problems during 2014 into 2016. Share price fell from $2.50, no, $7.50 all the way down to $2. And then it's recovered. Nice little V-shaped recovery in terms of monthly chart. So call best. And the last one was Nuren Pharmaceuticals. Always want to say Nuren Pharmaceuticals. They received their $40 million milestone payment. Um, now the market was expecting that, of course. So share price shouldn't have increased that much. I was sort of hoping the share price might have increased a fair bit. Acrux, fourth FDA and uh, approval received. Up nine. So, okay, reaction from the market. I... They were selling, about 10 years ago, they were selling some sort of drug to weightlifters or something like that. I can't remember exactly what. Um, you can see this. Let's have, I haven't looked at this company for a long, long time. Was it? You'll be able to see what happened to this company here. 2000, look at that. Beautiful. Share price went up to about $4.50 in 2012. And then whatever drug they were selling, something happened. I can't remember the story. And that's why the share price has fallen from that all the way down to 4.8 cents because of this drug they were selling. I'm pretty sure they were profitable. Uh, actually, we can have a look maybe. A crux. Financials. Maybe we can't. Historical financials. Yeah, back in 2014, revenue of 53 million. Now it's down to 1.7 million. Um, EBITDA 44.8, EBIT 43.4. Net profit after abnormals 28 million. Uh, they don't mention here the market cap, but the market cap would have been quite high back then. Um, yeah, so uh, anyway, I'm not sure why I'm rounding on about Acrux, a company I don't follow much at all. Now, now yesterday, Baby Bunning released a negative report. I just want to see how the market reacted today, and the share price is still going down. Uh, it's down 7.8%, down to $1.36.5. So there was no reason to buy yesterday because the share price did fall through a pretty strong support level, and it's continued to go down on more high volume. The next support level is $1.25. So it's near that. If I do see the share price of this company get towards $1.25, so if it falls a little bit more, I might be interested. I might take a position uh, in this company because of just the negative, the overall negative sentiment in this company and in retail right now, I think might be driving some of these companies to very attractive values. And this is what happens with cycles. So when there's positive sentiment, the valuation of a company probably gets to ridiculous levels. Happens with baby bunting when the share price got up to uh, it's almost $6.75 in April 2021. Was it high before that? No. So the valuation of this company would have been almost $1 billion. Now it's getting down to less than 200 or towards $200 million. Uh, and when there's a lot of negative sentiment in, in a sector or a company, you can see the valuations get to ridiculously low levels. And this could be happening to a company like Baby Bunting now. The other company was a Dares. Uh, the share price of this company just keeps on falling. They also released a negative announcement recently. And you should see the share price keeps on dropping. So that was the day to get out. And just like Baby Bunting, a Dares fell through a fairly strong, maybe not as strong as Baby Bunting, but it fell through a support level and it's kept on dropping. That support level was around about $1.67. Now, when I say a level in a price, I sort of mean a zone because the resistance level is not one single price, sort of a zone, but 167 was the lows we saw way back in June last year. The share price just keeps on falling just because of the negative sentiment. And let's have a look at the weekly chart for days. So nowhere near the COVID-19 lows. In fact, if everyone, anyone says, I don't believe that... Technical analysis works. Just look at this. Let's have a look at Dez. So they had a low negative sentiment drove the share price down in 2017 down to around about 60 cents. And the lows, not the absolute low in the COVID-19 financial panic was around about 60 cents. Uh, so again, uh, levels like this, resistance and support levels actually do work quite well. So if you ever see the share price of a Dares get down to about 60 cents, that would be an interesting point because that is, is a historical low for this company. I would struggle to think you know, it could get down to that level anyway. Now let's have a look at the best before. Actually, first we'll start with the top losers. 
Actually, first we'll have a look at the XHA, actually XAO, just see how it's done. Well, it's down for the day. It was up initially, down for the day. Uh, best performing companies on the X, or worst performing companies on the XAO, 88 Energy, Beach, have a look at Beach, Baby Bunting, still the third worst performing, Cobalt, Magnus, uh, Arafura, uh, Nuix down, Adez, um, no big surprises here. And best performing companies, uh, Novonix, Polynova, I've already talked about then, Appen, nice little bounce. And let's have a look at Appen share price. It was down the last two days, a bit of maybe not profit selling, but the share price in the company is very volatile right now, but it stays above, very important, support level. I'm going to call this support level at $3.20. It almost tested that support level and it's taken off again, but the volume a little bit lighter than I would like. And then back to the best performing companies, Playside Studios, Aladdin Resources, McMahon, Infomedia, but the share price increases now are fairly low. So XSO, let's have a quick look at XSO. That was up. Oh, the small caps did well. Uh, worst performing companies, Beige, Baby Bunting, saw the same companies in the XAO. Sierra Resources still struggling. Looks like Karoon Energy. Uh, energy prices or oil prices must have come down uh, overnight. I didn't have a look. And then the best performing companies, Novonix, Polynovo, ST Health, something about a takeover there, Infomedia, and um, Talga, St. Barbara, Ostel still bouncing. Uh, so let's have a look at the best performing companies overall on the ASX, not including companies with a share price less than one cent. So this excludes every, almost every company. Worst performing companies. I've already talked about Pacific Edge, Forbidden Foods, Bella Vista. So any interesting companies here, Dynamic Group Holdings, share price, that company all over the place, blah, blah, blah. So nothing really exciting here. And we've already gone through the worst performing company. And once we go less than 10%, I typically don't really care about those companies because usually it's small cap companies that are just highly volatile. Doesn't mean they're high risk. Just because a company's share price can be volatile doesn't mean it's high risk. Uh, okay. This is where it becomes interesting. So two best performing companies had share price rising above 100%. Fairly low market caps. Alvo Metals, 22 million after share price rise. And Sakasco uh, up 8.6% or 8 point, up 133%. Uh, and current market cap, 8.6 million, SGC, SCG. Uh, and let's have a look to see why these companies had a massive movement in the share price. I won't look at Metals Grove and Delarue uh, because those market caps are fairly low. So Alvo Minerals, T1 Iconic Clay Blue Bush acquisition. So this was just an acquisition. I never get excited about these announcements either. Uh, Rare Earth, it's understandable. Rare Earth is sort of the rage right now. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised to see more uh, um, mining exploring companies make rare earth acquisitions. And Sakasco Limited, uh, SCCB or 6B Cadlow Farmout LOI. Um, I'm not even going to read this. I don't care how the market reacted. I'm not going to read that because it's just, it's just the title makes no sense. Zelira Therapeutics up 30%. So we have seen a bounce for that company. Company have been following the last few days because the share price was up, was it 225%? 220, 224.5% on the 31st of May. So one week ago, but then a lot of selling came in and the share price was down 24.5%, 22.6%, 9.3%. And then yesterday, sort of a spinning top on the one day candlestick. So I think I may have even mentioned there's a sort of a fight between the bulls and the bears, uh, even fight at that point in time. And today we have seen a pretty big bounce. This is a good sign. And we have seen a little bit more demand come in. So what's been happening over the last four days is we've seen no demand. Uh, so the day traders are out. And what the market is watching is just when uh, the share price of this company sees an equilibrium, when there's no more selling. And that happened yesterday. Pretty easy to see what happened yesterday. A uh, fairly low volume compared to what's been happening. So the market sees there's no more selling. So those who wanted to sell have sold out 
And that's why we have seen a bounce today. We did see a little bit of selling today. Share price got up to $2.38. Share price closed at $2.11. And the main reason we saw a little bit of selling because those day traders who bought in high prices and in the last four or five days have their opportunity to sell out because they don't want to be stuck with this company because they want to get on to the next big thing. But a nice bounce. If we see some more volume, a really good bounce tomorrow, higher volume, that would be another good day for Zilira. But then it has to get past $3.38, or well, around that level, $3.35, to beat the high we saw last Wednesday. So a good day for Zilira shareholders, Zilira therapeutic shareholders, particularly those who bought in yesterday anticipating a nice bounce. And I think that's probably all I'm going to have a look at today. Uh, those are the only really interesting things happening on the ASX today. So even though June can be quite boring in terms of it's not reporting season, not quarterly, it's not August, not July, which is quarterly reporting season, or August, which is uh, full year reporting or half year reporting season, still in confession season. So companies are still releasing trading updates. That's probably the only exciting thing happening right now. Because in May, we had AGM season and we also had the secondary reporting season. Quite a few companies reported then. Uh, so June, one of the most boring times of the year in terms of nothing really happening on the ASX, but exciting time of the year because June is the best month. Personally, because it's my birthday this month. In fact, it's my birthday in one week. So anyway, that's all I've got for you today. Uh, if you have any questions about any companies I've mentioned in today's video or any other company, if maybe I've missed a company, I didn't miss a company the other day, I noticed, because uh, Parenti did release Parenti. When I totally missed this one. So I can miss announcements. And this was a trading update, a business update. Uh, yeah, the yesterday. And there was actually a nice little bounce uh, yesterday, up 4.3%, but it's down 3.3%. So, and the reason I wouldn't get interested in that announcement anyway, because just see, uh, since December last year, the share price has been at these levels. So it's going to be a lot of resistance moving forward. You want the share price to get to a new high, no resistance moving forward. And you also want to see pretty good volume as well. There wasn't much volume yesterday on the business update. It was a very short-term hit and maybe just some retail investors got excited. So sometimes I do miss announcements and that is one announcement I did miss. I did catch up later after I did the video yesterday. Anyway, that's all I got for today's video. Have a good day. Talk to you later. And I'm not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for this video. Have a good day. Bye.